So the next presentation is by Andrea, and uh, he's going to talk to us about machine learning for nitrogen detection at Alpha. Do you have the remote? Yes. Thanks for letting me speak today. And as you can see from my introduction, from my outline, I will talk about a bit uh, why we do an experiment and uh, uh, how it would be done with the develop apparatus. Then I'll try to, to briefly summarize how we do reconstruction of annihilation of the antigen. And it's all very standard, so we'll be very quick. Then I'll make a case for having uh, machine learning for the defiant annihilation. Then finally, we talk about future work, current work, and so on. So, antigen is a very is a, a tool to study to, to test the foundation of the thermodynamic generative. In particular, we are after studying the CPT invariant. This can be done by looking at the masses of uh, particles and antiparticles as it's done with the, uh, with the metal kaons, or it can be done by looking at the charges of uh, electron and, and positron, or as, as we did, by looking at the spectra of hydrogen and antihydrogen. And this is already the, the bottom line of this talk. We, we can set the limit on CPT uh, relation to the order of 10 minus 10. And, um, but we also look working to have a test of uh, principle and it is coming again soon. So the experiment is uh, located at the CERN undergoing the accelerator and it's cached here. And uh, here we have an uh, electrostack which we trap the antiprotons and the positrons, make up the antihydrogen. Then here, uh, there are in green and in red the superconducting magnets that use to trap antihydrogen. And finally, these boxes here are the annihilation detector, which is one of the main points here today. And what I'm going to show here for simplicity is the external solenoid, like the one Tesla that uh, is used to, use to trap the charged antiparticles and then they need a path. So in this slide, I'll try to explain how we do an experiment to an experimental cycle, and this is useful to understand how, why we need the uh, uh, fine algorithms to detect antihydrogen. So we start with, uh, from the antiprotons and, and the positrons, we cool them, and we synthesize antihydrogen in uh, about a second. And then we start what we, I call here interrogation. We, we probe antihydrogen either with uh, um, ultraviolet light, or with a oscillatory field, or with a microwave, and so on. And this phase lasts from 5 to 15 minutes. Finally, we uh, shut down the, the trap, the neutral trap, and this is rather quick. So during this interrogation time, there are three things can happen. Either we shine resonant radiation, could be with a laser or microwaves, and so on. <coughs> Then we have another, uh, another run, another cycle, we shine off our resonance light, and then we always have a, like a baseline experiment where we keep the antigen trap and then we don't do anything, just design. So this might be a little repetition of what we just said before, but uh, I want to point out that we have uh, this detector with the double cell silicon, silicon detector, Made of, made of three layers, uh, 72 modules each, and we track mostly uh, charged ions from the antigen annihilation. And then uh, annihilation, of course, at the trap wall. And then these ions travel to a lot of material, uh, or the high, dead, high density. So it's a very challenging environment to do position reconstruction. So, as I said, this is the, our, let's say, five point algorithm for recognition for vertex reconstruction. And uh, this vertex, which is where the antigen has been created, is really the antigen signature. So, we should from the strips on the detector, we identify tracks with some part recognition. So, we did GDCs because if you remember, we had the one set of solenoid. So, we have the GDCs and then we start the track that look more like uh, uh, charged pions. Then we find the point where the pions they pass closest to each other and that's our vertex. Um, 
So we will do the same procedure whether we uh, uh, cosmic in our detector or in anti allergen elucidation. Before, our um, the ground, our main background and our only background are cosmic rays. And this is our order of 10 hertz. And then we, if we use a standard uh, fast tap analysis detector in this way, we, we can turn it down to 47 millihertz. However, in each cycle, we chop about 10 anti atoms per, 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 per cycle. So, so even consider the shortest appearance in China, we never allowed a mention of five minutes. We can see the depth 14 cosmic rays were at this rate. Before, without a stronger background, background suppression, the signal is washed up. So we have to do something on Tyson. So, and this is really a classification problem. So on the left, we have the typical ambient annihilation. Uh, we, we, and this is the, the trap wall I showed before. Uh, we have uh, three charged particles arriving on the detector. We find that that and so on. On the, on the right, we have what cosmic event. And uh, the first, uh, the top is very just a straight line with uh, 68 to 52 identified. The, the bottom is much harder, and as you can see, it really looks like an application, but it's not, it's a cosmic ray. So it's really a classification problem. Um, therefore, we employ, we employ uh, an NDA method. So we do the training on real data because we can. The, the, the ground sample is very simple. We just run the detector without antiparticles into in the machine. and. Um, uh, in the, this particular analysis that I'm uh, showing, we have 1.6 million events. For the signal, uh, we, if, you, if you recall, that I was mentioning before, we have this uh, uh, phase where we mix the positrons and the protons to make a garbage and this is the one second of every cycle. Before, we had a lot of hot and garbage so that annihilated without escaping the trap before we can trap it. And uh, for example, this we had a sample of uh, 208,000 uh, events. So this is what we train on. There's only one, one, one caveat here, which is the distribution of the vertex, I mean, of the, of the vertex, which can be very different for this mixing the data and for the physics measurement. Therefore, um, we cannot rely upon any variable, any, any anything that has to do with the depth position of, of the vertex. And I'll show you if you like what I mean. In the classifier, we use a, a bug decision tree on this package. I think. Okay. Here about here. Uh, so variables, uh, number of hit, uh, the total nine is our first four, number eight, number of oceans. Square residuals, which you can think of as uh, the distance between the heat position and the, and the line through them. And then we build this statistic uh, tensor, which is uh, from the momenta to the momenta of a track. And it is uh, gives some topological from some shapes of the um, event. And we take the ion vector component, uh, say, like uh, a where the quadrature of the eigen vectors and largest eigen vectors, and then we take the five components of the vertex and the other components and so on. So this is I have this slide I'm gonna show how these variables you know play play out. So anti allergen, so which I call mixing here as uh, my many more hit. Uh, and many more tracks. Usually, cosmics they have only two tracks, but these are the, the cosmics in blue that are that are three, four tracks. Those are the real the dangers, the real the real problem that I was mentioning before. With the, uh, we have to remove from our sample. Sorry, is that before your cut or no? No, this is not after the cut. No, so, 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 this is before. So okay. this is this is okay. just you know, I just take the, the two samples. The, Cosmic and, and mixing, 
and then plot them, put them here. Uh, the vertex radius, you see the carrier is peak around the trap radius, the beginning is the trap radius, while cosmics are all over the place. In a situation, it's very easy. Cosmics, they are very high energy compared to the nostril, so there are ions, so in a situation, it's very small because everything looks like a straight line, so they are all here. The situation for the carriage is here. Uh, there's this the cancer, there's two other of the other others we use. This is just to show a few factors. So, put them together in our classifier. We get the that uh, random forest output. We, in this particular case, we optimize to have uh, the optimal classifier at uh, 100 trees for variable for features, uh, 16 uh, events per leaf. And we find this, we optimize the output by using uh, some hunting just because uh, we are lazy. And finally, we get uh, 4 millihertz um, the ground rate. So, which is it's, it's a, it's a, it's a tenth of what we got before. Therefore, now now we can now we can do physics. The acceptance is not ideal. With 50% of the disappeared channel, oh, I should explain this more in more detail. But uh, so it's still a factor of you know five to ten, so one to ten. So we are we are good here. So and that's what I was I was getting about the, the distribution. So uh, we after this is before and this is after. The, the 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 cut and so the, the, the that's what it looks like for for carrion and that's what it looks like for cosmic things lower the base this is where the depth of end and after the the the, the, the cut the distribution look mostly like the same so we are safe so we have messed up with by well bias our our sample or that like that so and uh, why this is the redistribution of the real data of uh, so the physics measurement. So on the bottom, there is the when the laser is on the resonance, and the top when it is off resonance. So there are two loss mechanisms. Upon interaction with the radiation, the antigen is lost from the trap for any electromagnetization or uh, decays to an of state. That, that, that's a fine in mean, physics, but while during, during radiation, when the, when the Light is resonant with uh, with the with the atom. We really get a broad, uh, like a sharp peak at um, uh, due to this loss this loss mechanism. Uh, while when there is no resonant light, uh, this this this, this counts are compatible with the ground. And you can also see how thanks to you know, machine learning we have a much better signal to noise ratio compared to the standard pass gap. So I, uh, I I finished this this presentation and uh, so to summarize uh, alpha experiments of the tools to study physics on a model. Uh, we rely upon construction um, and identification of intelligent information and the background of the cosmic due to cosmic rays might be overwhelming. So we use uh, advanced algorithms to remove such a ground. Uh, we train uh, uh, our classifier on real data, uh, and in this way we were able to, to test CPT by uh, 0.2 PT level. So uh, current future work. So all, all I showed you so far was based on this SPR package. Uh, TMDA looks easier to compare those classifiers, so we are working on this. Increase number of variables from 9, as I showed before, to 17. And then we like to go to see if we can do uh, deep learning for construction or together that become the from the hit and go upward from there. I would like to thank for the whole day after preparation and particularly three people that uh, work to get this possible. Uh, because if you need to understand, for me at least, 
And if I am proven, I'm a teacher to complete a collaboration, which is the last time for the position. So that's the point. But when, when, when we, we want to really use the thing day, a bit more, we try to compare more than fire. This one to me was the most, you know, the easiest to understand. Uh, do you know the no. So if you are not using any root formats, you don't want to use this thing. I could learn like outside of the thing like in the standard tool and there you also have the same model. Alright, I'll put it down, but we use all your data. I think also has to manage that even allows you to do it. Okay. Yes, uh, thank you for the nice talk. Uh, can you go to station nine? Yeah, so I'm wondering if you are using the time information. Mm, it is, it, it, this is a few centimeters thick. This is eight. Um, so, for that, we are developing a, like a cosmic veto. Is much farther away, so it's outside the outside the solenoid. So it's, uh, so where with the time distance becomes relevant, so you can do simulation based on that. And then also the time of solution required becomes very stringent. So let's say you win in very fast timing with the readout, <coughs> order of uh, hundreds of people, few hundreds of picoseconds. So working on that. But it is more, it is more like a detector the document than a software file. I have one. Did you try to apply your uh, your uh, classifier on the on the hot data afterwards? And how does that compare to your signal data? So. The main thing that bothers us that would bother us is this bank the business. So this is the hot data before and after the duck. And then you say So you, you showed the performance of your no, go on for a few slides. Yeah, here. So um, so this is the that's not the hot data. No, this is the hot data. This is the, the best sample. Okay. So both this and this are uh, the best sample. Oh, we have okay. the, the one million and one thousand is put in three equal parts. Okay. One for optimization, one for validation, and this is the best. Okay. And how does the hot data then how does the performance of the hot data correlate with the performance on your actual signal data? Is that I mean did you do yeah, I suppose you did this cross check. Is it the same or so yeah, so by for example using this figure method we get similar values for, okay. and yeah, so that's, that's the main. We have very few, anyway, we have hundreds just, just to, to, so this is our data, okay. This is number of counts, okay. So I need to, to use it. I can feed this on a spreadsheet. Sorry about that. That is very cheap. Okay. Questions? Thanks a lot. Yeah.